Hi, my name is Father Keith Romke, and I am the pastor of St. Patrick's Parish in Dixon, Illinois. I grew up uh, in Elgin, Illinois, to extremely loving parents, uh, Dave and Joyce, they're great. I have one older sister, Liz, and growing up, we were, we were absolutely the best of friends. Um, as a family, we made sure to go to Mass every single Sunday. Um, of course, when I was really little, I'm like, Mom, why do I have to go? And of course, not understanding and realizing just how, how great of a gift it is um, to, to receive the Eucharist and, and to go to Mass. Obviously, I learned that uh, a little later on. I have a pretty, pretty big family, great uh, relationships with my aunts and uncles and my cousins. When I got to be a freshman in high school, um, I had an aunt who actually passed away from cancer and it was really, really difficult for me. It was the first death we had really had in the family. I was having a difficult time with it and at the wake, another aunt came up to me and to kind of cheer me up, she said, you know, have you ever thought about being a priest? Because I think you'd be a really great priest. And I was like, really? And she was like, yeah. And I was like, okay, maybe, you know, maybe I'll be a priest. So the next day after the funeral, I was telling everyone that I wanted to be a priest. And people were like, oh, that's really nice. I remember going up to the priest who I'd never met before. And, you know, all my family were like, tell him, tell him. So I was like, oh, I think I'm going to be a priest. And he's like, oh my gosh, this is so great. And he was all excited. And then I went to my school and started telling my friends, you know, I think I want to be a priest. And one was like, oh, that's great. I told another one, like, oh, that's awesome. And then I told this one friend, this one girl, I said, yeah, I think I want to be a priest. And she goes, what? She goes, why would you want to do that? And I was like, well, I love God. You know, I want to help people. She's like, yeah, but wait. I thought you liked girls. And I was like, oh my gosh, I do. I was like, girls are the most important thing in life. She's like, then why would you want to be a priest? And I was like, what are you talking about? She's like, well, you know, priests can't get married. And I was like, what are you talking about? I don't know how, but for some reason I didn't realize that. So at that point I was like, there is no way, zero, zero percent chance that I'm gonna be a priest. And I didn't think about it at all for another four years. Then I ended up uh, graduating from high school um, I had originally wanted to go to the University of Illinois uh, for engineering, but my parents were like, you know, it might be a good thing for you to, for you to stay close. You have a couple year scholarship at the community college. So I had agreed to do that. And at the beginning of the summer, I had this youth group that some of my friends belonged to that they had invited me to go to this concert. So I went to this concert and in between these two bands that were playing, there was this evangelical speaker, this guy that got up and he starts talking about the Lord and everything. And in the middle of his speech, I hear this voice, clear as day, actually heard a voice say, be a priest. I was like, wow, that's awesome. So I went home, it was late Saturday night, and I told mom, dad, I, I think I wanna be a priest. And they're like, oh honey, that's wonderful, that's awesome. Why don't you go to bed? So the next morning I woke up, went to mass with my family. I knelt down and before mass, I just prayed, God, if you want me to be a priest, send me a sign. One hour later, at the end of mass, my pastor gets up to the ambo and says, there's uh, somebody who's with us over the summer that I want to introduce to all of you. It's a seminarian. Anyone who's interested in the priesthood or wants to know more about it should talk to him after mass. And my mom turned to me and she's like, didn't you say something about priesthood last night? And I said, oh, huh, wait till I tell you what I prayed right before mass. So the seminarian uh, invited me to go to a vocation camp that we have at the end of the summer, every summer in the Diocese of Rockford. So at that point, I've heard a voice say, be a priest. And, you know, this seminarian all of a sudden appears and invites me to go to this vocation camp. It's pretty clear what God is calling me to. But for me at this point, I'm like, no, I still have my plan to get married to a beautiful wife, have amazing kids, and to have the most amazing family in the history of the world. So I'm like trying to figure out what, what I want to do, you know, how I'm going to make this all work. God's calling me to be a priest. I want to have a family. So I finally, after a lot of like thinking through, I was like, I know what I need to do. So I went to my parents, I said, Mom, Dad, I know what I'm gonna do. And they're like, what are you gonna do? And I said, I'm leaving the Catholic Church. And they were like, what? And I said, yeah. I said, because I wanna have a family. I said, so I'm gonna go and I'll become a Protestant minister. And so that was my master plan. I thought I was so smart. So I worked at a library at the time and there was this amazing little old lady who was there that I worked with. And she said, oh, you know, how was your weekend? I said, oh, it's great, I'm gonna find a new church. So she invited me to go with her to her church because there was this guest speaker. So I go that next weekend and the guest speaker is there and he starts talking and everything. It was great for a while. And then all of a sudden he says, you know, you guys will never believe this. My mom is Catholic. And the whole place was just like, oh, they just absolutely gasp. And he goes, and because she's Catholic, she has this thing up on her wall called a crucifix. And it's Jesus on the cross. It's Catholics think that Jesus is still on the cross. I'm gonna sit in there thinking, oh no, of course that's not true. Of course, why, do, why as Catholics do we have a crucifix, right? It's because we know that Jesus died for us. We know he rose from the dead, but he died. We have to be willing to take up our cross, right? To carry that cross. 
for the sake of, of salvation of souls. Sometimes things are difficult, but we know that great fruit comes from it. So he continues his story and he said that one day when he was home alone, his parents uh, were gone. He took the crucifix off the wall. He went downstairs to the basement and he took a hammer and he took the claw into the hammer and he pried Jesus' body off the cross because Jesus is risen. And everyone's like, woo, and everyone's cheering and everything. And I'm sitting there like about to vomit. I'm like sick to my stomach. And I just sense the Lord say to me, that is exactly what you are trying to do with your life right now. I'm calling you to something beautiful and what you are trying to do, even though yes, it may involve sacrifice of your plans. What you're trying to do is to set the cross aside to pull yourself off from the cross and to run as fast as you can in the other direction. I was just like, oh my gosh. So at that point I was like, okay, I know what I need to do. So I went home, my mom was like, how was church? And I was like, it was terrible. And she's like, eh, good. So <clears throat> of course went to confession for missing mass. Um, and I've never missed a Sunday mass for the rest of my life. So I ended up going to that vocation camp. Then this is about three weeks before college is gonna start. When I'm going to college five minutes uh, from home, the community college. And when I arrived there, I saw that there was a friend of mine from my high school. We both just graduated together. We were from the same parish. And he was there as well at this camp. And I was super excited that he was there, that I wasn't gonna be, you know, alone. I'll say too, at this point, I was still thinking, eh, maybe I'll just be a youth minister. So one of the seminarians, the third day of the, the retreat in this camp, asked me if I wanted to serve mass. And I said, well, you know, I'd love to, but I can't. He said, why not? I said, well, I've never done it before. I don't know how. And I figure, you know, okay, now I'm, I'm out of it. And he goes, oh, you'll be fine. He was your friend, Ben. He's gonna serve mass also. He'll just tell you what to do, just follow him. So there I am, no training whatsoever and I'm gonna serve Mass for the first time. And it came to the end of Mass right after communion, and my friend Ben said, you're gonna go up, you're gonna pour water um, into the chalice, and the priest will tell you when to stop. I said, okay, great. So I walk up, I start to pour the water, and the priest looks at me, and he says, be generous, pour it all. And this huge wave of peace like I'd never felt before in my life came over me, and I knew in that moment, without a shadow of a doubt, that that was the Holy Spirit speaking through the priest, telling me to be generous and to pour out all of my life, for God and as a priest for the church. So I got an application, all ready to go to seminary. Um, my parents picked me up from the retreat from the camp and they said, how was it? And I said, it's awesome, I'm going to seminary. And they're like, oh, hold on, not, not, not so fast, you know? And, and like good parents are saying, this is, this is something brand new that just came up. Of course, you just went on this retreat. You're on this retreat high, how do you know? And I said, no, I know that this is what God has called me to. I can just, I can sense it. And so we actually went back and forth for a couple hours you know, just kind of talking about what would be the best thing to do. Now, my friend Ben had decided that he was gonna to go to seminary, but he was gonna wait one semester. So finally, my dad says, you know what, Ben's gonna go on one semester. Why don't you, why don't you just wait? And then you guys can go together. Wait one semester, you guys can go together. You can go together, you can go together, you can go together. He kept saying that. Wouldn't it be great if you guys could go together? So finally, I was like, great. I'll wait a semester so we can go together. Next morning, I go to mass, and my friend Ben was there, and my mom and sister were there too. And I went up to him after mass and said, Ben, I have something really important I need to tell you. And he said, okay, but I have something important I need to tell you and I wanna go first. And I said, okay, what is it? And he goes, I talked to my mom last night and I talked to her into letting me go to seminary now with you, that way we can go together. <clears throat> and he said, and what did you have to tell me? And I said, oh, nothing, it, it wasn't important. So a couple weeks after that, I found myself in seminary. Um, I was in the seminary in St. Gregory the Great Seminary in Seward, Nebraska for four years, 2003 to 2007. And then after that, I uh, studied at the North American College in Rome from 2007 to 2011. I absolutely loved my time uh, in seminary. Sometimes people will say, what was it like? Like when you first entered seminary, that's a pretty, a pretty big thing. You know, just being, being at home and you have your plans for your life and all of a sudden now you're entering into a location where it's gonna, you know, this is your entire life and you're not gonna get married. What was it like? That's such a big thing. And, and I always tell them, you know, it didn't feel that daunting. People would ask all the time, but it didn't feel that daunting. And the reason why, even though it maybe seems like such a big thing, is if I'm faithful to what God's calling me to today, great, I can get through today. And if God asks me to do something tomorrow, great, I can do it tomorrow. So it never felt like this big, huge thing. It was like, I was like, yeah, I'll just do this one day at a time, one step at a time, and, and I'll get where I need to be. So when I was in seminary, you know, there were definitely some times where I started thinking, you know, is this, is this what I'm called to? You know, God, is this really what, what you want me to do? Um, and in those moments, I would always just come back on the fact that, you know, when I had such, such strong events and moments happen in my life that I would just kind of pray and say like, okay, God, you led me on a path to be here. So if you don't want me to be here, 
you're gonna be the one who's gonna have to let me know that. You're gonna have to give me some sort of a sign. Just because all of a sudden, you know, I have friends who are getting married and they seem so happy. And I'm like, oh gosh, you know, maybe I'm having a down day today. And they seem so happy, you know, grass is greener on the other side kind of thing. I realize like, no, the reason why I'm here isn't because I've decided to do this and I want to do this. Don't get me wrong, I do wanna do it, but it's like, no, this is what God is calling me to. So the only way that I'm gonna leave is if I truly feel that God is calling me to leave. And he never did because this was his call for me. So finally I made it to the day of my ordination and was just so overjoyed. All my family were there, you know, my friends from, from so many different moments um, of my life. It was absolutely amazing, especially being able to lay down on the floor um, during the Litany of the Saints and just in a sense like, and at first I was like, okay, I want to like feel this moment and for everything to be great. And then I, all of a sudden I caught myself thinking like, no, like I just want to let this, just just the grace and these saints and their prayers just just wash over me. So I just kind of let go and just allowed it just to, just to be. And then of course the moment where the bishop laid his hands on my head was just so incredibly just, just peaceful and powerful. Um, I have to say though, probably, probably one of my favorite moments of the whole thing would be when the bishop pours the chrism oil over the, the priest's hand and the bishop just slathered it. It was like pooling up in our hands. It was the coolest thing ever. Um, and that oil just smells so good. And I will never forget the next morning, um, you know, to be the morning of my first mass. I remember I, I woke up, hadn't even opened my eyes yet, and I'm lying there and I kind of had my hands up over the pillow. And as I'm there, before I, again, I even open my eyes, I just kind of, you know, I'm breathing in and out and I'm like, what's that smell? And I kind of like, you know, all of a sudden I started smelling my hands and I was like, oh my gosh, because I smelled that because I was like, I'm a priest, right? And that was like my first moment where all of a sudden it clicked up. I was like, yep, yesterday morning I woke up and I was just, I was just Keith. And now, now I'm Father Keith Rock, you know, like I'm a priest. So yeah, I absolutely just love being a priest. It's the most joyful thing I could ever imagine doing. Talking about joy, what are the joys of priesthood for you, Father? There's a school at my parish, and I just love being able to see see the kids. You know, I love going up, giving them high fives and everything, just showing them that that the Lord, you know, the Lord loves them. So I love that. I love being able to go into the hospital. You have somebody who's down, and when you come, I always I always tell them when I bring the Eucharist, I say, hey, I have the best medicine for you today, better than anything else anyone else is going to give you. You know, we give them the Eucharist. Um, visiting the elderly, just whatever it is. I would say also, I love going into the confessional. A lot of times you'll have it where somebody, they come in and you know, it's, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. And you just tell that the heaviness and the weight. And when I finish saying, I absolve you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, you can just tell they're like, thank you, Father. And you can just, you can just sense that you know that you absolutely made a difference in their life you know, through this incredible sacrament and being able to, to be with them in that moment of prayer. Thank you, Father. So, Father, yes. you're so multi-talented. You sing? Yep. Yeah, I love, I love singing. Uh, I picked up the guitar when I was in seminary, um, and I love being able to just to do that, especially to go over to the school, just kind of play guitar, sing with the kids, have a great time with that. Yeah, so you sing, you play the guitar, and you also are into water skiing. Yes, yes, <laughs> I love water. I picked that up when I, when I was a kid. I've always enjoyed doing that. Um, I actually, my deacon here at St. Pat's, um, he actually has a boat on the river just, just a few minutes from here, so it's fun. If from time to time, he'll take me out water skiing. And there was one instance where in, you were in your collar and somebody said, you're not swimming today? Absolutely, yeah. I was going out there. I knew that there were going to be kind of some, some middle schoolers and some of their parents too and everything. And the deacon said, hey, if you want to come down and join us. And I thought, oh, absolutely. So I showed up fully dressed in my collar and everything. And the kids are like, what? You're not going swimming? Where are your swim trunks? And I said, oh, I don't have swim trunks. Like, You're not going swimming? I said, oh, I never said that. And I jumped right in the water. And they're like, what? And when water skiing went, and you know, some, some people were even like, father, why would you do that? And it's like, well, here's the thing. If I'm in my swim trunks and a t-shirt, it's like, okay, whatever. 
You know, like it's not something that that is memorable, you know, <laughs> but but doing this, it's the kind of thing that, you know, hopefully years down the road, let's say these kids, you know, are off at college, maybe they're in a crisis of faith. They're like, I don't know who to turn to. And they're like, you know what? There was this one priest and he was so crazy and he did this <laughs> thing and that was fun. And who knows, maybe that one little moment's the thing that they'll be like, you know what? Maybe I can trust the church. Maybe I can trust the priest. I'm gonna go and they'll reach out to the Lord. It's one way of evangeliz uh, evangelization and it's sincere. It's yeah. not like you're trying to impress them. It was your way of reaching out to them. Right, this is who I am. I am a priest. It's not something I do, it's who I am, no matter what I'm doing. So, we can't just stop there. We need to now act in response for God's gift and his generosity to us. So let's say a prayer of thanksgiving. So we all want to take the great idea, right? And we pray. And I remember this morning's gospel, I realized that the people in the Bible, they act in the same way all the time. Father, I see that you're a bit of a <laughs> Cubs fan here. Just a bit. <laughs> I, I absolutely love the Cubs. Um, and it's fun because, of course, there's other people out there who love the Cubs. And when they hear that I'm a Cubs fan, I'm able to, to talk with them about this and connect with them. And then, of course, after that gets established and everything, I'm still be able to be like, hey, guess what? I also, I also love God and the Lord. And I'm able to bring them deeper in there. So it ends up being just a great connecting point. Well, that creativity is really good. Father, I see you as an agent of evangelization. You're on Facebook, you're on Twitter, you're on Instagram, other forms of communicating the message out there. What's new <laughs> with Father Keith Ram? Yeah, so I, I would I love being able to just take whatever it is, not just like, okay, let's open up the Bible and talk about it, but take whatever experience is going on and being able to relate that, because that's our lives. Everyone has normal experiences. Um, so kind of the latest thing that I've been able to do um, I had an idea. I was actually in Rome up the top of the Basilica, St. Peter's Basilica, and I got an idea of something that I wanted to share, a spiritual message. And I thought, okay, I'll go back, you know, to the seminary later and I'll type everything out. And I thought, you know what, no, I'm just going to film a video and talk during it. Um, <clears throat> so I ended up actually putting it up on, on Facebook. Earlier today I was coming down by the river and I saw that it's just absolutely surging. And a lot of times it's kind of peace and calm and it's, it's doing its own thing. I think a lot of times in the Christian life, we live in just kind of a normal, like calm, like kind of like a stasis. But God wants for us to live like powerfully. He wants for his presence in our lives to be something that is so powerful. So how do we do it, right? How do we go from just kind of being normal to really living a powerful faith? And it was incredible the reaction that I got from people. And people were like, oh my gosh, this was awesome. Thank you for sharing it. That's great. And you've told me that a lot of people have actually been saying, please continue to do so. Absolutely. Wow, that, then that inspires you to continue on with whatever God has inspired you. Absolutely. Oh. And the thing that I love so much about it too, when I get up at the pulpit and I preach, I'm reaching a certain amount of people. But by doing this, it allows me to just continue to expand and reach as many people however we can. That's what evangelization is all about. Uh, yes. What other creative ideas have you come up with? I just try like on social media to post as many things I can. Some things I, I definitely take something that's going on and I try to tie it in with a message about, about the gospel. Sometimes it's, you know, pictures of me celebrating the sacraments. Other times it's simply, let's say, you know, me and my family at a Cubs game to show that, yeah, I'm out in the world. Sometimes people like will say like, oh, I would never want to be a priest because all they do is pray all day and it's boring. <laughs> well, no, like we live, we live normal lives that are dedicated to the Lord and, and, and it all, it all ties together. It's a fun, joyful, exciting life. It doesn't necessarily mean that when you enjoy things, you're of the world, you're in the world, but not of the world. Exactly. So you still look up to what needs to be done as a priest. Exactly, exactly. So I would say like when I'm to be in the world and not of the world, to be able to kind of come to a point where we experience things in the world, connect with people there and then bring them up to the Lord, which is exactly what Jesus did. He came from heaven down to earth to be with us, to teach us his message of love, die, rise from the dead. Why? So he could bring us back with him up to heaven. Yes, and your video that was that became viral that had almost a million hits, Father. Uh, the carpool karaoke with Father Kyle Mano and Bishop Malloy. How did you come up with that creative idea? It was just brilliant. Thank you. So we did it for our youth summit, um, which was something that Bishop Malloy wanted to do. The youth summit itself was his idea because he wants to be able to bring the message of Christ's love to the youth. 
And the thing that's so incredible, he's an, he's an amazing bishop. He wanted to make sure at every single youth summit that he has an opportunity to speak to the youth. And so we knew that he was gonna be up, getting up and, and speaking. And so we wanted to be able to give him the absolute best intro ever. So one of the people in our office um, came up with the incredible idea to do kind of a carpool karaoke thing. Um, so myself and Father Kyle Maynard were there, we were driving and halfway through, you know, we get a call from the bishop and I picked up, oh, let's go pick him up. And just having a good time, kind of interviewing him, singing songs, including Go Cubs Go, with him um, right there in the car. And it was absolutely incredible because the kids loved it. And immediately after that, the next segment then for Bishop segment, Father Kyle Mano was like the talk show host interviewing the bishop. And, and it was awesome because the kids were so excited, like, wow, Bishop is an awesome guy. And they were so ready just to hear his message. So again, it's the whole idea of just Bringing, bringing them in, kind of coming to their level, doing something that's, that's trendy that they're gonna like, and then all of a sudden you're able to bring them up to a higher level. Bishop, you like the Cubs? You know, I can't think of the last time that I was someplace where there was a chance of winning the championship. So I'm a Cubs fan this year. Okay. <laughs> Awesome, here we are, Rock Valley. Thank you for the ride, guys. You're very welcome. Who's inside now? A lot of kids. That was a good way of catching their attention. With Thank you. a lot of hits, they're paying attention now, like how could priests have fun? We thought that they'd just go to mass and they're like so holy and they're like cut for something special, but the, the video just showed everyone that, hey, priests have fun and a bishop can have fun too. Absolutely. So that just shows the joy of being um, a believer, Absolutely. a servant of God. And just like you, you are living the life of the priest that you were cut to be. So Father, thank you so much for being a guest here on Bokari. You're welcome. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Absolutely everyone has a vocation. You have a vocation, something beautiful that God is calling you to. And it is by saying yes to this, whatever it is, that we are going to experience the most joy that we can possibly have in life. Whatever God is calling you to, that is gonna be just happiest and most joyful. God absolutely loves us. And what we need to do is be able to say yes today to what God is calling us today and to say yes tomorrow to what he's gonna call us to tomorrow. One step at a time, we'll get where we need to be. Maybe it seems seems so daunting. Anyone who gets to you know the, the base of Mount Everest and is looking up and is gonna climb it, they're not gonna climb it in one day. The most important thing we need to do is pray. So I encourage you to say yes to whatever God is calling you to do. And by that, I mean, do what God's calling you to do today. Continue to say yes and you'll end up where God needs you to be and you'll have his peace and you'll have his joy. God bless you. To all of the viewers of Shalom TV throughout the world, I want to encourage you not only to support this amazing media apostolate, but to spread the word to others. We all know how the internet and mass media are polluting the world with the poison of pornography and so much other forms of materialism. This is the source of eternal life, the gospel, and Shalom TV is consecrated to spreading the word of Christ. Thank you. Shalom World, God's own channel.